Hey there, it's Brie, and these are my favorite romance novels with wild heroes. I feel like I have to clarify that when I say wild, I don't mean wild as in crazy, I mean wild as in animalistic. So I'm talking about heroes who are kind of caveman-like, who maybe live in the wilderness, or who are like savage or loners, or who don't act humane, they act more animalistic than they do human, which means they have maybe some possessiveness in there, a lot of times they're naive to the ways of humans and the ways of relationships and things like that. If you can't tell already, the book that inspired this entire list is Transcendence by Shay Savage. I recently read that book and fell in love with it. In fact, I binged it all in one night. I stayed up all night long. I stayed up until like 4.30 in the morning. I had to work the next day, but I needed to finish that book because I was in love with it. And that whole book is a time travel caveman romance. And it got me thinking about a few other books that I read that had very similar heroes like that. And I realized that I have a type when it comes to books and heroes in books and one of them is a wild hero. So I decided to compile a list of all the romance novels that I love that have wild heroes in them and I was very surprised to find that I have 10. Well I have nine and then I have one more that just recently came out that I'm hoping is going to be great. That also inspired this list but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Obviously the first book on this list is Transcendence. Like I said before it is a time travel caveman romance so the heroine travels back in time and ends up in a trap that our hero had set and he lost his entire family in a fire so he's completely on his own and he has made this little cave that he lives in and he discovers her in the trap and one of the best things about it is that the two of them can't communicate because he doesn't speak he doesn't have he doesn't know words he can't read and she does and what's interesting is it's completely told from his point of view a few people told me in my recent reads video when I talked about this book that there is a second book in this series and it's from her point of view so that'll be really, really interesting. I haven't read it yet, but obviously that would be on this list as well. So the entire book, you know, they're communicating by body language, facial expressions. And what I loved about it was the fact that the hero had this animalistic caveman quality to him. So there was a little bit of alpha-ness in there, just a little bit in the fact that he felt like she was his mate. Like he saved her, she's his mate. So she belongs to him and she like taught him through body language and teaching him the word no that that is not the case and they slowly start to fall in love and everything is brand new to him. And I love that in a book. I love heroes that are very naive to the world and just are in awe of everything that they discover when they fall in love. So this book has a lot of that. It's so sweet, it's so sweet and it's such a swoony romance. I loved it so much and it's very, very unique. That's another thing. Almost all of the books on this list are very unique as well. The next book on this list is very fitting. The title is is Savaged and it's by Mia Sheridan. I love Mia Sheridan. She wrote one of my favorite books and this particular book is actually pretty interesting. There's pretty much something for everyone in this list. So if you like a little bit more action, a little more intensity, if you like a murder mystery, then you'll probably like this book because although the central part of this book is a really strong, really good romance with a wild hero, it also has a murder mystery. The main character has been sent to, I think this cabin in the woods, to try to solve a murder and the prime suspect is the hero and he's the only one who was around I think when it happened I think if I remember correctly I read this a really long time ago I think he grew up in the woods so I don't know how well he communicates but he wears like animal skins and he like hunts and things like that and she ends up getting stuck at his place. I forget why, I think there's a snowstorm or something, so there's forced togetherness and they're like stuck in his cabin for a while. They end up falling for each other that way, but he also is a male virgin, so there's that sort of naivete about him as well, and he's discovering things and discovering his attraction to her during this entire book. He's a hero that is very gruff, very masculine, because you know, again, he was raised in the wilderness. I think he was maybe raised by wolves or something, I can't remember, but he's lived in the wilderness his entire life, so he's got 
got that mountain man-esque vibe to him, but then he's also very sweet and very pure, and it's just a great combination. It was a bit over the top at times. I think I ended up giving this book four stars instead of five because it was a little bit over the top and because there was a bit of focus on the murder mystery, and I didn't really care about that as much as I cared about the romance, but the romance was still really, really good. Number three is very different. It's a sci-fi romance, and it's a very popular sci-fi romance. It is the Ice Planet Barbarians. I'm including the entire series because pretty much the entire series, all the heroes kind of fall into this category. A few more than others, but mostly they fall into the kind of wild hero category. So if you don't already know, Ice Planet Barbarians, I always describe it as like Avatar fan fiction <laughs> because I picture the heroes in this and the aliens in this looking like the Avatar creatures. Like they're tall, they have a tail. Can't remember if they have horns, but they have blue velvety skin. And the whole premise is the creatures, I forget what they're called, but they don't have a lot of women on their planet. They all are meant to be mated, but the planet that they ended up on doesn't have a lot of women of their kind. So there are a lot of men who don't have mates, but once aliens are mated, they can't really stray. This ship that has a bunch of human women on it that were kidnapped crash lands into the ice planet that these aliens live in. And the only way that they can survive is to get these things inside of them. I think they're called a Qui or something like that, but they get these things implanted inside of them. And those are the things that also allow you to mate with someone and to find your mate. They like sing to each other. So a bunch of these male aliens are getting mated to these women. And so when you have the whole mating bond and issues with communicating and stuff, you get the kind of caveman-esque vibes from these aliens. So that's why I included them on this list. But if you've been hesitant about reading it, if sci-fi is not your thing, or if you seem weirded out by it, I highly recommend giving it a try, I think you might be surprised. Number four, I absolutely had to include Credence by Penelope Douglas. This book takes place basically in the wild. It takes place in a cabin in the woods up on a hill or up on a mountain. And it's a very, very, very extremely taboo romance. Like I said, there's something for everyone on this. This book is not for everyone, fair warning. The heroine, her parents died by murder-suicide. So obviously lots of triggers in this. And she ends up having to move in with her uncle. And I think she's 17, she's about to turn 18, but for that short period of time, she has to move in with her uncle because he has custody of her. And she's never met him before. She's not related to him by blood. She ends up going there with him and she ends up having a relationship with him and his sons, so like her cousins. But again, they're not related by blood. They didn't know each other when she was growing up. There was no grooming involved. The reason why I included this is because one of the sons is extremely savage. Like he disappears into the woods for long periods of time and comes back. When he first sees her, he just like drops everything and just like launches himself at her and is like sniffing her. And it's so like, it's so not for everybody. Some people are gonna be completely turned off by this hero, but for some reason, and probably because I'm drawn to that in books. It didn't bother me whatsoever. I actually really, really liked him with her. <laughs> So, you know, whatever. Like I said, again, not for everybody. This book does also have a forced togetherness thing because when winter comes for them and it snows a lot, they kind of have to stay in their house. They can't go anywhere. So they have to prepare for winter by like prepping food and everything like that. They end up being stuck in this house together for all of winter. So if you like forced togetherness, if you don't mind taboo, if you love Penelope Douglas and you also like a wild hero, definitely check out Credence. And number five is another Mia Sheridan book. It's my favorite by her. It is Archer's Voice. And this book I talk about all the time, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Y'all know if you've been on my channel for longer than like three videos, then you probably know that I'm obsessed with this book. In this book, He's not so much wild as he is the town loner. He's also a virgin hero. He is mute. He doesn't speak, but he can hear, so he can communicate by sign language. And the heroine just happens to know sign language because her father was deaf. So she is able to communicate to him. She's new in town, and everyone kind of shuns him. He kind of like kept to himself and is kind of rude to other people. So that's how he falls into this wild category. He's probably the least wild out of all of them, but he is a loner and he does have that kind of wonder about him when he does start to find himself being attracted to her and falling in love with her. She has to kind of like 
teach him how to be intimate and things like that. And it's just super, super sweet. But he does have a bit of wildness about him. Like he, you know, fixed up his own house and he does everything on his own. Love, love, love this book. It's probably my favorite on this list. Next is a book that I read a long, 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 long time ago. And it's very, very different from all the other ones on this one. In fact, it is a paranormal romance. And I read this so long ago, but I read it multiple times. And I really need to do a reread of this whole series and then the series that this spins off of. And that is Ecstasy by Jacqueline Frank. This entire series is amazing. So is the Nightwalker series that this spins off of. You don't have to read the Nightwalker series before reading this one. You can totally start with this one if you want. I highly recommend the Nightwalker series. So if you want to do that, you totally can. I thought about including the Nightwalker series, but the heroes in that tend to be very sophisticated. And while these heroes in this are kind of sophisticated as well. There is this whole other, like, it's kind of like a dimension or alternate universe. I forget what it's called. Shadowscape. It's called Shadowscape. There's this whole other alternate universe, not really alternate universe. It's almost like it exists side by side to this universe, but it's called the Shadowscape and only the shadow dwellers can pass through there, except for the heroine who gets in a really bad accident and ends up in Shadowscape. The shadow dwellers kind of go in and out of Shadowscape, but they can't stay long because if they stay too long, they go crazy. So they do it to kind of like be stealthy, I guess. And shadow dwellers also cannot have any contact with light whatsoever not just sunlight but any light because they will burn to a crisp and they will just like poof the shadowscape is completely dark so she ends up there and he is there too and I forget why he's there but he ends up I think he ends up getting stuck there or he's staying there to take care of her or something can't really remember but what ends up happening is he ends up super intensely falling for her but then he starts going crazy because he stays there too long and he his craziness translates into obsession with her and that's why I love this one so much because I'm so into the guys who are like obsessed with the heroines and this one is even more so because it's like induced by this mania because he's stuck in the shadowscape or refuses to leave the, leave the shadowscape. It's just, it's so good. And like I said, this whole series is so good. There's like a bodyguard romance in it. There's like so many great tropes in the series and the romances are so epic. The steamy scenes are amazing. It's beautifully written. I just, I love the series and I love the Nightwalker series. And if you like a wild hero, especially ones that lose control, I'm so into the heroes that lose control because they're so obsessed with the heroine. This book has it in spades. Number seven is a book by Tilly Cole that I had forgot I read. Like recently I read, I think it ain't me, babe. And I said that it was my first Tilly Cole. And that wasn't true because I forgot that this was by her. So it is Raise. It's Scarred Souls book number one, like I said, by Tilly Cole. And in this book, this is super, super dark. It's super intense. I think I ended up giving it four stars instead of five only because it was too much. Like, it was a little too much for me. And when I say intense, it's like trigger warnings all over the place. But I think Tilly Cole is kind of known for that. So I think when you go into a Tilly Cole book, you kind of expect that. But anyway, this book is a childhood sweethearts book. The hero and the heroine feel like they were destined for each other when they were kids. Like they had always had this extraordinary bond. But also when they were younger, the hero was abducted and became a prisoner who was forced to fight in these like underground fighting rings. He was raised to be this like killing machine and that's all he knew from the time he was very young until adulthood when he finally escapes and then they meet, they see each other again. So he went from being this regular kid who had this connection with her to not really remembering her and becoming this wild, crazy guy who has a whole lot of issues, like mental issues on top of it. But she, when she sees him and especially when she realizes who she is, she still remembers that connection with him. And somewhere inside of him, he still feels that connection as well, but he's just turned into to this animalistic like killing machine monster so it's just really good it's really good it's very intense though like I feel like it was almost over the top intense because it goes into great detail about what happened to him and what he was forced to do and it's like fighting to the death type of thing that he had to do since he was little so his whole life was just surviving like doing these fighting matches to the death and that's all he's ever known 
and only has like vague memories of her. So very good, but very intense. All right, we are almost there. Number eight, I included a novella. It is Sacrifice to the Beast. This is by Jessica Kane. I read this a while ago, I think like a year ago. And I thought it was going to be more of a Beauty and the Beast retelling than it was. And it's actually much more lighthearted than I initially thought it was. I guess there's this town and they think that there is this beast that comes and attacks the town. So they have to sacrifice someone to keep the beast from attacking the town. And so the heroine is one of the people that gets sacrificed. And it turns out that the beast actually ends up saving her and he becomes obsessed with her. And of course, he's very wild. He lives out in the woods. And when I say beast, he's not actually a beast like he's He's a guy, like he's a human guy, and of course he's attractive and all of that stuff. This book is crazy. It's short. There's not a lot of like obvious character building or world building or anything like that. It's not anything amazing, but for a short book, I really liked it. And again, because I like those kind of wild heroes, I felt like this book was perfect for this list. And then number nine is Fire in His Blood by Ruby Dixon. Ruby Dixon is the author that wrote The Ice Planet Barbarians. So there are a lot of parallels I found between this and The Ice Planet Barbarians. I didn't like this one as much as I like Ice Planet Barbarians. I think I give it three or four stars, but it still falls under this category because the thing that I loved about it was the fact that the hero was so like wild and animalistic. And in this particular one, the hero is a dragon dragon. He's a dragon shifter. And the heroine, it's another situation where she's like sacrificed to him and he comes and he ends up like saving her instead. But they also have a communication barrier and he is like attracted to her. So he thinks he like can possess her and everything. And she has to teach him no. And it, what's great about this is that he listens, like he understands consent very easily. And that's like the number one thing I love about this one is even though he feels he has like this innate part of him that's telling him that he needs to like mate with her and that she belongs to him and everything, he still listens to her when she says no, even though he can't even understand her language. So I'm just saying, like, if he can do it, anyone can do it. I'm like, just saying. So yeah, if you're super into dragons and you liked the Ice Planet Barbarian series, definitely check out this series. I'm pretty sure the whole series revolves around these shape-shifting dragons. I didn't move on in the series because this wasn't my favorite thing in the world, but it did have a great wild hero. And then last but not least is a book I have not read yet, but Jess from Peace Love Books, who also did a video similar to this, she did um, wild romances, I think, and it wasn't necessarily like specifically animalistic heroes, but I think there are a couple of books that I mentioned that are on her list, but she has books that I did not mention and I have books that she didn't mention. If you like this list, definitely check out her list because even though hers is different, it's not necessarily books that take place in the wild or wild heroes. I think she meant more like crazy type romances. Definitely check out her video because you'll probably find some books that you like if you like these books. But anyway, Jess had posted on Instagram about this book and I had messaged her. I was like, oh my God, I need that. And I ended up buying it even though I'm supposed to be doing the Kindle clear out. <laughs> but I had to buy this because it is a Tarzan retelling. Talk about a wild hero. So um, it's called Love in the Wild. It came out or comes out on September 28th. I don't know when I'm gonna be posting this video. So it'll probably be after or the day of posting this video. I don't really know, but it's by Emma Castle. I haven't read anything by this author before, but the cover is amazing. And just the fact that it's a romance, but a Tarzan retelling tells me that it's going to be everything that I love because we're talking about a hero who like grew up and was raised by, I think, um, monkeys or, or chimpanzees or something. I can't remember. I don't fully remember the Tarzan story, but what I do know is that like, I don't know if you guys saw the Tarzan remake with the guy who played Eric from True Blood. But that's what I'll be picturing when I read this book. I think his name is Alexander Skarsgård. That's what I will be picturing while reading this book. Like I said, that was my last book on the list. I somehow managed to find 10 books that have wild heroes. And I honestly didn't think I'd be able to find that many. But as I started compiling this list and going through all the books on my Goodreads read list, I was like, oh my gosh, there are a lot of books that I read like this. So if you have any books that I didn't mention on this list, please let me know down below because I am always here for a wild hero, especially if they are a virgin hero as well. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, happy reading.